Okay, how do we attack this problem of epistasis and Labradors? Now remember, these guys have a supplementary um, interaction, which means they need one gene to allow another gene to work. So in this case, um, the AA and the BB from my videos, this AA gene is the one that it needs to control whether or not the BB gene can actually show. And in this in Labradors, we actually call that AA gene the E gene, and the BB gene, which is the color gene, we call that the B gene. Okay, so that's how we're going to label them from now on in the video. Now, in here, you've been asked to talk about whether or not um, Angel and Bandit can produce black, brown, and gold Labradors in their um, mating. You're also asked to find the ratio of the colors from the children. And whether any um, what percentage of them will be homozygous now before we go any further you've got to remember a few things that we have now learned about Labradors first of all the E gene can only control fur color they need that to deposit the color in the fur it doesn't control the lip and the nose color so from the lip and the nose color, I'll just get that right in there. From the lip and the nose color, you can actually tell what um, B genes they have because that's not affected by the E gene. Okay, and of course the B gene, if it's big B or um, big B little b, it's going to be black, and if it's the recessive version little b little b, it's going to be brown. And this results, that's the fur, and the same in the nose. Nose and um, lips, it's going to be black or brown. So let's have a look at these guys here. You can see down here that this is a golden retriever, so it's got a recessive gene here on the control gene, same one with this, recessive. But the difference between the nose color is, diff is quite obvious. So this one here has a brown nose, so it's little b, little b. And this one here has black nose, so it has at least one big black gene. We don't know whether it has two or one, though. Uh, over here, you can see this chocolate-colored dog has chocolate-colored nose, the same over here. So he has little b, little b, and he has brown fur. But because he has the color in his fur, that means that he has at least one dominant E gene to allow the color in the fur. Same with the black dog over here. He has at least one dominant E gene to allow for the black. He has a black nose, black fur, so he has at least one dominant B gene as well. So let's go back to our pedigree then and use that information to figure these things out. First of all, always figure out as much as you can with what information you have. So, honey. She has golden skin uh, fur which means she's recessive over here for her um, e gene but she has light colored nose which means she is a recessive for the b gene baxter of course um, has a recessive for the b gene because he is brown um, and he must have at least one big not b e gene let me get rid of that one big e gene there to allow for the coat to actually have color in it. Gus over here is black. So he must have at least one dominant control gene and he must have at least one black allele for the color. Roxy on the other hand is brown so she's a recessive in the color and she must have at least one dominant e gene to allow that color in her fur. Now they go together and they make Zeus here. <clears throat> now Zeus is going to get at least one color gene from mum and one from dad and at least one dominant uh, E gene to allow for that black color. So he's going to have at least one dominant here but we really don't know what this second one is here because um, he, either one of these could be recessive and if they were recessive it would appear here and it'd still be black. So we still don't know what that gene is there yet, okay? 
However, he's turned out black. So he's at least got one black allele from his dad for the black. And he would have only been able to get a recessive gene from his mum, so his heterozygous for colour. Let's have a look at Missy. Missy's golden retriever, so she is recessive here. Now, if she is EE -E here to get that golden colour there, one of those E's came from that parent there, but she had to get the other E from her dad which means he has to have a little e here because that's gone down to be in Missy there. So we now know what Baxter is by looking at his kids. Uh, she has that golden nose, uh, brown's nose, sorry, which means she is recessive B, which she could only have been given Honey and Baxter's genotypes. Over here, oh, let's keep going down there and figure out what band it is first. Now here's Bandit, he's black, so he must have at least one dominant E gene. Um, let's see what else, so he, if he's black he must have at least one big B gene. Now let's look at his parents and see what they had to have given him. Now Zeus could have given him a big B or a little B, but Missy could only give him a little B or a little B. So that big B must have come from Dad and he must have a little b, because that's the only choice he had, from mum. So he's big b, little b. Now, Missy is also um, homozygous recessive for e. She can only give e genes. So that means this other e gene here must be a recessive gene, making him a heterozygous, a heterozygous black. So let's have a look at Angel now. Angel is descended from Oscar and Luna. Now Luna is brown all over, which means she has at least one big E gene and she's recessive for the B gene. Oscar, he has at least one big E gene um, and he has at least one big B gene. We don't know what the other one is, but let's see what Angel is. So if she's golden um, in colour, but black in nose, that tells me something. First of all, she has to have a big black gene there. Um, and she is recessive for the E gene. Now, if she's got an E and an E here, that means she got one from mum and one from dad, which means they're both heterozygous for E because they both had a gene to give her. So now you know mum and dad's pheno uh, genotypes, except for this one here. Now, because she has, uh, we know Luna was recessive BB, she can only give a little B, which means Angel has to have a little B in there as well. So we actually have enough information from this to figure out their um, their uh, cross in a dihybrid cross. So here's the cross we're going to do, Angel Cross Bandit. Now we've got to on our dihybrid cross figure out what gametes each of these guys can make and to do that we have to figure out what they're going to put into the sperm and the eggs. So let's have a look here. We've got Angel, she can give me an E, a little E and a big B. She can give me a little e and a little b. And the same here. Little e, big b, little e, little b. And you don't even have to worry about this line because that is a copy of that top line. So you could even not even worry about this now because it's going to be exactly the same ratio. Now bandit. Big e, big b. Big e, little b. Little e, big b, little e, little b. So their kids are going to have this. So if we've got that, and that would be copied down into the next row exactly the same, let's have a look at what we're going to get with the kids. So, my drawing tools out here. 
Let's look for any browns first. So browns are going to be um, dominant E gene and little b's. So that's going to be brown and that will be the only brown. Black. Um, black is going to be dominant E gene and a big B gene. There we go. And of course these guys over here, we've got our, our yellows as well. So we're going to have a few girls there who are nice and golden in colour. So all of these are going to be golden. But if you look at them, these guys are going to have be golden with a brown nose. And these guys are going to be golden with a black nose. Okay, so for the phenotypes and genotypes of the offspring, we're going to have um, golden ones. We're going to have four out of possible eight or eight out of possible 16. Um, black, we're going to do three out of eight and brown is going to be one out of eight chance. Okay, so that's the phenotype. So the question of can you get all uh, colors in the offspring? Absolutely yes, especially because dad is a heterozygous for E and B. Um, what are the ratios of them? Well, there's the ratios there. What was the last bit of question? I think that might be it. What percent will be homozygous for B? Well, homozygous for the B genes. Well, we're going to have one there, one there. So two out of eight will be homozygous for um, the recessive version and that one there, one out of eight, no, nope, there too. Two out of eight will be um, homozygous for the dominant version of the gene. And there you go.